Halloween is a day away, but some think there has been an ongoing witch hunt on some investment funds. Details just ahead on exactly who those funds might be and why they're under the witch hunt. And Michael Phelps. Let's be clear who Senator McCain's fighting for. He's not fighting for Joe the plumber. He's fighting for Joe the hedge fund manager. Well, hedge funds have taken a hit financially and politically. New data from Dow Jones Newswire show investors pulled about $31 billion out of hedge funds at the end of the third quarter. And hedge funds have become a political football on Capitol Hill and on the presidential campaign trail. Is it so? And what is the future of the hedge fund industry? Jonathan Honig is the managing member at Capitalist Pig Asset Management and Patrick Morris, partner at Hagen Investment Management. Good morning, guys. Morning. Good morning. Jonathan, nice to see you early in the morning here. All right, well. Thanks, Alexis. Great to be here. It's, it's you know, we haven't talked about this in a while, but I'm, I'm sure you're pretty outraged about what's going on. Does the industry need more regulation? Alexis, the industry is already heavily regulated. Whenever I hear this charge that hedge funds are these, you know, nefarious, unregulated entities, I, I have to laugh. I mean, hedge funds are regulated in the number of investors they can have, the net worth of their investors, their ability to solicit investors. But even more than that, I think especially on Capitol Hill, there's a tremendous amount of ignorance over just what a hedge fund is. Um, not all hedge funds are leveraged. Not all hedge funds trade derivatives. Uh, it's a legal structure. It's not an investment strategy. And until these Washington lawmakers get that, I just don't think we're going to have any progress at all. Great point, Jonathan. Let's let's break it down in layman's terms, in terms of exactly what qualifies as a hedge fund and the type of investors that are allowed to invest in hedge funds because there's certain requirements which you have to meet in order to even be able to invest in a hedge fund. That's correct. I mean, hedge funds are private investment partnerships, just like mutual funds, that follow a host of strategies. And in order to be eligible to even invest in a hedge fund, you have to be what the SEC calls an accredited investor. That's kind of SEC talk for rich. You essentially have to have a net worth of over a million dollars. And they run the, the strategies run, you know, run the gamut. And I think the most ironic thing is that hedge funds, these unregulated, nefarious, you know, manipulators, are far, far outpacing all of the regulated entities this year. You know, that conservative the S&P 500 index fund that the government wants you to invest in is down, what, 30 percent year to date. The hedge fund indices are doing much better than that. All right, Patrick, here's the issue, though. The issue is, is that the hedge fund industry got so big, so fast, and Wall Street was giving them money so cheap so that they were able, in many cases, not everybody, but some, to leverage themselves to such unbelievable levels that now, while some of them are collapsing, they're taking the market down with it. How do you respond to that? Well, I mean, leverage has become sort of a dirty word, though it doesn't necessarily have to be. I think in a lot of cases, uh, some funds were allowed to get a little probably a little over levered um, and what ends up happening actually the real danger with that is when they're unwinding some of these positions and their shorts are going against them and the long book isn't doing very well the actual leverage actually increases and that's where you really get into trouble that's when you start hearing about funds that are 30 40 100 times uh, levered so um, leverage in itself is not necessarily a bad thing but when you start to get yourself into trouble on the short book when the long book is going against you the leverage starts to, to grow effectively that's when you really start to have trouble. You know, Jonathan, George Soros spoke at MIT, not yesterday, the day before, and he put out some pretty bearish predictions about the hedge fund industry. I'm sure you very well know about them, suggesting that a half to two-thirds of the industry may be gone as a result of what's happening. What do you make of that? Well, you know, Alexis, money managers in general are feeling the heat right now. I mean, investors aren't just pulling money from hedge funds. They're pulling money from, from mutual funds as well. We've seen massive outflows from equity mutual funds. So, you know, money management in general is kind of a tough business to be in right now. But I think what would be tragic is to see the industry break down because of regulation from Wall Street and not from the informed knowledge of the investors who actually invest in hedge funds. And as I said before, you know, it's been a very tough year for almost all investors, but hedge fund investors on average are far outpacing the pack. And all that regulation, the proposed regulation, is just going to make it more expensive and more difficult okay, but, for Joe but Jonathan, Sixpack to take advantage of but these Jonathan, opportunities. Jonathan, you know, you and I both know, they're not going to let the hedge fund industry be immune to what's going on. It isn't just the hedge fund industry that they're talking about increasing regulatory oversight. They're talking about doing it for everybody. I mean, I'm kind right. of of the belief that we're at the point that investment banking, private equity, venture, hedge funds, I mean, the lines are going to get blurred because they have to get blurred. 
Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. We're, we're, you know, and Barney Frank has all but promised it, Alexis. We're entering an era of big government and higher regulation towards the ent entire spectrum of investment world. And I think, you know, just like Sarbanes Oxley was supposed to solve, you know, the potential for, for investment fraud in this country, obviously it did not. I think it's just going to make it more expensive and more difficult for people to actually make money right here in the United States. Patrick, what about the future for hedge funds? Because some suggest with the carnage that's going on in the pension fund community that perhaps hedge funds take on some of that responsibility you know will, will there be different models because there certainly be a lot less securities from which they can trade with sure well I think there are a couple things that are probably gonna happen one whenever you have a crisis like this what you'll tend to see is you'll see over regulation for a while and then down the road as the market stabilize and returns start sort of coming back to a more normal level you'll see the deregulation cycle but in the interim period I think you'll see a big pushback from certainly public money firefighters police educators people that really you know they pooled the assets together and they look like big institutional assets but they're actually it's just a lot of small accounts I think what you'll see is you'll see those funds being restricted from doing a lot of things and that could be very unfortunate because as it was noted if you just put your money in the S&P you really we haven't done that well. well. Yeah. So this idea that we have to regulate hedge funds out of the market, I'm not necessarily sure having all this money just in S&P, you know, sort of uh, index linked types of securities would have really saved them from a lot of this pain. Yeah, I'm not even going to ask the two of you how you felt about all the uh, short sale bans because I know it'll be an exciting uh, conversation between the three of us. <laughs> Jonathan and Patrick, great pleasure having the two of you on. i got to get you two back because, Thanks, you know, Alexis. I'm fired up about this conversation. Thank you, guys. <laughs> all right, now let's go over to Jennifer.